This is the scene in the movie where everyone's like, no, don't run upstairs, run outside. But the main character's like, I'm gonna run upstairs. Like, no. <laughs> and within a few minutes, there is a lot of cops on scene. There is not just patrol officers, but there is narcotics unit is on scene because there was an open investigation on us. Now I'm starting to think like, this is bad. This is not a routine stop. This is bad. What's up you guys? Welcome to today's video. So we have a lot to talk about today. We're going to be talking about the time I was arrested by the drug task force. Now, hold on before y'all say you already made this video. I did. I filmed this video about two and a half years ago and it has like 15,000 views on my channel, but I took it down because the quality was bad and I always meant to refilm it, but I just forgot. Now, I have even more tea than just talking about the night I was last arrested because that arresting officer reached out to me on Instagram and we're gonna talk about all of that today. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jess. I'm a recovering addict who served time in prison. I will leave my entire crazy love story. <laughs> should be my theme song in the description box down below. If you wanna follow me on any other social media platform, Patreon, TikTok, Instagram, all of that is down below or maybe it'll pop up on screen, who knows. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Before we get started, let's just address the elephant in the room. My hair is crazy out of control because I have gotten like two haircuts this year. I just didn't think I needed to because, you know, Corona. So I just kind of stopped going to get my hair cut. Okay, anyway, so let me take you guys back to October 20th, 2011. Baby daddy and I broke up and I decided, peace. Uh, I'm leaving Arkansas. I don't, I don't want to be here anymore. I'm done with you. I'm done with this whole state. I'm done with selling dope. I'm done. I was honestly so mentally exhausted, physically exhausted, spiritually exhausted. I was done. And I had reached my breaking point. So three days before I decided I'm done, baby daddy had put a gun in my face because he thought that I stole some stuff from him that I didn't steal. That doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is he put a gun in my face and I was very crazy and very violent and very hostile and I was screaming at him to pull the trigger because we were both under the influence. But that was the moment for me that I just decided that I was done. I'm not staying here anymore. I'm not dealing with this anymore. I, I hate Arkansas. I hate the life that I have made for myself. I, I just, I'm done. So I decided for the third time, to get a bus ticket. Now, I had got a bus ticket from my old boss on the magazine crew. My friend Matt and I talk about magazine crew. I'll link that down below or I'll leave it on the card up here or wherever it pops up on screen. But I never got on the bus the first time. The second time my friend Anna got me a bus ticket to Binghamton, I decided, nope, sorry, I'm not, I'm not making it. And finally, here's my third ticket. I'm done, I'm packing up all my stuff. I got a motel room at the Motel 6, I think it was, to stay there for the night. And then in the morning, I would get on the bus. The last time I used was at 4.36 in the morning. So I decided for whatever reason to go to the gas station and get food. And as soon as we pulled up to the gas station, I saw a cop across the street and I told baby daddy, he's gonna pull you over. He is going to pull you over. And baby daddy's like, no, nah, it's fine. You're paranoid. And I'm like, I promise you I'm not. I'm not green, homeboy. He's pulling us over because it's not 4.30 in the morning in New York City, Chicago. Like it's 4.30 in the morning in Fort Smith, Arkansas. There is nothing but us. There's no one else out. He's pulling us over. He is pulling us over. So we go in the gas station and we get random stuff. I think I got cereal, Milky Way, a soda. We got cigarettes. And the whole time I'm walking around this gas station, looking across the street, just every two seconds, looking across the street. And I'm like, oh my God, he's going to pull us over. <laughs> and I asked baby daddy to leave everything at this gas station, throw it away, put it in the freaking dumpster, like throw it, flush it down the toilet. I don't care about the stuff, throw it out because we're going back to prison, bro. You know, and I'm trying to get through to him, but he is just out of his mind. Now remember three days prior, he thought that I stole from him. So maybe somewhere in his mind, he thought I was setting him up to steal his stuff or whatever. I, I'm not exactly sure what he was thinking. All I know is that that cop's pulling us over and he's not trying to hear it. So I get a moment of fuck it. 
let's go. You want to go to jail today? Okay, let's go to jail today since you don't want to listen to me. And for whatever crazy reason, I was like, I'm going to prove you wrong, bro. Let's go. Get in the car. Like, what? No. This is the scene in the movie where everyone's like, no, don't run upstairs, run outside. But the main character's like, I'm gonna run upstairs. Like, no. <laughs> At this point in this movie, everyone that is watching in the audience is like, just walk. You know what I mean? Like, don't get in that car. Throw the stuff away. Don't get in the car. Don't drive dirty. Like, why'd you even bring it with you? Everyone's asking legitimate questions that are fair. And the main characters are like, <laughs> screw it, it's fine, let's go. No, it's not, I promise. <laughs> It's not, okay. So sure enough, we pull out of the gas station, this cop gets behind us, and the whole time I'm chain smoking cigarettes and I'm texting everyone, jail Fort Smith, jail Fort Smith, jail Fort Smith. Because in my high brain, I'm like, someone's gonna come bond me out. It's not a big deal, they'll just bond me out. It's okay, right? No, no, because once I'm gone, they'll have another connect and it's not even a, who cares? No one's gonna bail me out. They're gonna be like, oh, Jess is gone? Oh well, who else has stuff? Because there is no loyalty in the streets like that. I had a few people that would have done anything to help me, but in that moment, I had no one. I had no one close enough to help me. I had no one with the money to help me. I had no one that was not a felon to sign for any bond that I would get. And for the first few days, I had no bond. Well, actually it was a couple of weeks, I wanna say, that I had no bond, if I remember correctly. But I'm thinking, I'll let my mom know I'm going to jail, I'll let my sister know I'm going to jail, I'm gonna let everyone know in Arkansas that I'm going to jail, someone will come get us. The cop gets behind us and baby daddy is hiding stuff and I'm chain smoking and I'm crazy and I just can't even believe this is happening but I also knew this was happening and my mind is racing just a million miles an hour so cop comes to the car and it's just all bad it's just all bad you know he knew that we were hiding stuff in that car he knew it took us a minute to to you know pull over he he runs the name and within a few minutes there is a lot of cops on scene there is not just patrol officers but there is narcotics unit is on scene because there was an open investigation on us and I'm looking around and there's this one officer he was not in a street uniform he was not a street cop he was a narcotics unit officer he's got a vest and his badge and I look at him and I'm like I know him I know him he followed me around in Walmart he was with me at that Thai restaurant a few weeks back like I remember his face I remember seeing him in all these different places he was in a freaking unmarked car at this hotel when I told someone that I was with not to sell that night because I saw him and I'm like no no no. they can wait till later I'm not selling it nope and then the person that I was with decided you're being paranoid let's sell it anyway so even though I was like the cops are here other people that I was with was like, yo, chill, it's gonna be fine, everything's fine. But over the course of six months, they built a case on us, me and a whole bunch of other people. Fort Smith is notorious for not just arresting one person, but for building a case on, on people in that area and then doing sweeps, arresting 15 people, 30 people. Like they, they investigate for a while. And we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to the officer that messaged me and I'm sure he's watching this. And I, I have so many good things to say about him, but we'll get there. I already know that I'm going because I have felony warrants out of New York. So, you know, they, they pull us out of the car and they're searching the car and within two minutes they find it. But at the whole time I'm like looking at this one officer and now I'm starting to think like, this is bad. This is not a routine stop. This is bad. Like this is, <laughs> This is bad. So they pull up the dope, they arrest us, and I get taken to jail. But the fun does not end there because I'm in the back of the cop car and I hear over the radio, oh, you'll never guess what I found. And I'm like, I bet I fucking can. And what had happened was instead of calling a, tr a tow truck to take this car to the impound lot, they drove my car themselves to the impound lot, which in my New York brain, I'm like, that's illegal. You can't do that. Like you're not in Kansas anymore, Toto. <laughs> you're not in New York anymore, Jess. Like everything you think you know about the law, it doesn't matter. Throw all that out the window. But I was just starting to figure that out. And I thought in court, I could have made my case that what they were about to find, they found after I was on scene. Can't prove that's mine, but that's just, you know, my criminal, let's defend myself mindset, right? Now, I'm in the back of the cop car, I hear that over the radio, and my car was a manual transmission, so as this officer was shifting my car, you know, he shifted it too rough, and a Glock fell out under the steering column. So I'm thinking, I can get out of that. <laughs> 
That was my criminal mindset. I'm gonna, I know the law, I can outsmart this, I can use the law in my favor, I can create a very solid defense for myself because that's what I had always done before. I know the law, I always paid for my lawyers before. I knew what was going to happen, but my whole life was about to change because I didn't have any money to pay for a lawyer. So they also found about $5,000 in the car that was seized because if you get possession of drugs, possession with intent, they automatically say that you're a dealer. It doesn't matter if they can prove that or not. If you have over a certain amount, it's intent, which means intent to sell it, intent to distribute. And that's drug money. They will always say that. So they, they seized my assets, meaning my car and the money and all of that. And I'm an intake and they have all that stuff on the freaking counter. You know, they have the dope and the gun and they had found a hotel key my Motel 6 room key, and one of the officers, I don't remember which one, but I remember this very specifically. Maybe my, my new cop friend will let me know which one it was, but he was in my face screaming at me because the door was jammed, and he's like, what is in that room? And I'm like, tweaker journals and some clothes, bro. And he's like, he's like, no, what's in that? What is in that hotel room? If it's booby traps, blah, 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 screaming, screaming that there's a meth lab and his officers are gonna get hurt. And I'm like, whoa, you think I have a meth lab? <laughs> um, I can get out of this. What? I was so high that I thought like, oh, they don't really know what I've been up to because they think I'm making meth. Like, that's crazy. Y'all are crazy. I'm getting out of all this. <laughs> Girl, go to sleep eat a sandwich, shut up. But that was my brain. I was like, I can get out of this because they don't know what I'm really up to. Yes, they do. They actually knew a lot more than I thought they knew. So anyway, moving on, because I already feel like this is extremely long. That cop is screaming in my face that his officers are gonna get hurt, that I've booby-trapped this room, that there's a meth lab in this room, and he's screaming. I just start laughing at him because I thought he was crazy. I'm like, are you messing with me, dude? Like, you're not serious, right? Do I look like a freaking chemist? I didn't even wanna know the ingredients when I was using it, so I sure as hell wasn't trying to make it myself. A lot of people along the way try to tell me the recipe and I'm like, whoa, you can just pump the brakes there. I don't need to know what I'm putting in my body. It's freaking terrifying. So I was just very against hearing anyone's recipe even though plenty of people wanted to share it with me. Because that is also an addiction, is cooking cooking the substance. People get very addicted to every component of it, just like I was very addicted to the ritual of using intravenously, like mixing it up and, and all of that. I became addicted to so many different components, the lifestyle, the money, the rush, the needle. I became addicted to all of it. And in doing so, I was tearing myself apart. So let's fast forward. I get brought into interrogation a few days later, and this cop is sitting across the table from me and he says, narcotics unit, drug task force, and he says, you know, my name, where I'm from, that, you know, I just, I'm gonna wanna cooperate with him and help him because it's really gonna help me and blah, 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 you know how they do. And at this, at this point, I've had time to sober up. I'm not the crazy, pissed off, screaming person that you're arresting, no, I am now lawyering up. But it's too late, it's too late, you know what I mean? Like, if you get arrested, shut up, just shut up. Don't say anything. Don't talk to them at all. Lawyer is the only word you know when you're arrested. But I was under the influence and because I was already going, I'm like, it's all mine, charge me with everything, let him go. Because uh, in the back of my mind, he can bond me out. <laughs> because I was under the influence and I wasn't thinking clearly and never in my life have I done that in an arrest, I'm always like, lawyer, lawyer, lawyer. Hi, my name is, give me a freaking lawyer, you know? And, but it was too late for that because three days prior, when I'm extremely under the influence, I said that everything was mine. I'm gonna show you guys the text in a second. But anyway, this officer pulls out a file, looks substantial, and pictures of inside of my car. And he shows me handing a big bag of meth in the back seat. So I had been selling to uh, confidential informants for them for who knows how long. So they ended up charging me with delivery as well. I thought, now I'm in fight mode. I am in fight for my life mode. We'll go to trial, you drove my car, and I've talked about that many times here. So I thought I was gonna be able to outsmart this, and I thought I was going to be able to study legal material the whole time I'm in county jail, and I'm going to be able to get out of going. Back to prison. Nah, girl, <laughs> you're going. But at the end of the day, I was tired, and I didn't care. When they arrested me that night, I did not care. I was so done, I was so defeated, I was tired, I was sick. I did not want to do this anymore. I didn't want 
want to sell anymore. I didn't want to use anymore. I was so done that it's either death or prison because I don't know what to do and I can't get myself out of it. Every single time I tried to get out of it, I got pulled back in by someone or something or my addiction or a circumstance and it was impossible. It felt like to me at that time that it was impossible to leave that world. So let's fast forward to today. I get this message on my Instagram. I wanna start off and apologize if I was ever disrespectful or treated you like lesser human being. It was early on in my career and I was too wrapped up in the good guy, bad guy mindset. I just had a young <laughs> patrol officer come up and ask me if I remembered you. They watched your YouTube channel and when I watched the video of you explaining your arrest, I immediately remembered when and how we met. I then started to watch your videos and I'm extremely happy for you and the life that you've made for yourself. It's been nine years ago and I have moved on in my career and now work in our narc narcotics unit where in my time doing the job, I see who I always saw as bad guys, as fellow humans needing help. I still do my job, but I treat everyone with respect and help where I can. I know you may not be a big fan of law enforcement and I understand that, but I saw the opportunity to apologize if I ever made you feel disrespected or like, like a lesser human being and I am truly sorry. And I said, wow, thank you, I apologize, but I don't really remember you because I've been arrested many times. And he said, I stopped you and baby daddy on Lexington, kind of by Anderson's pharmacy, no clue where that is. Uh, the dope is in a crown royal bag behind the center console and the gun fell out from behind the dash while we were driving it to our impound lot. I'm like, ah, what's up? <laughs> First of all, your message made my day. Your message made me so happy. And I'm so grateful that you reached out and, and you said that to me, but you treated me exactly how I deserved. You treated me fairly. I needed to be taken off the streets. I needed to be put in jail. I needed to go to prison. I needed all of that. And you, that night, pulling me over, helped contribute to saving my daughter's life. Yes, I did that. Yes, I stayed sober. Yes, I got her back. But if it wasn't for that moment, if it wasn't for getting arrested that night, who knows where I'd be? Who knows if I even would have survived? And as for me not liking law enforcement, no, I have a lot of respect for law enforcement. I couldn't do that job. And I will never understand what it takes to be a cop. I'll never understand the day in and the day out trying to get people help, trying to get people off the street, dangerous people. I couldn't imagine the stress of that job. His message just brought things full circle for me. Again, you know, it's amazing that he reached out and I'm going to be sharing more of what they're doing in Arkansas to help addicts when I can. I, I told him that I would wait to share that as soon as everything got passed through or pushed through. So there's really exciting things going on. And I think now in 2020, not only are law enforcement officers starting to see that prison's not working, but we have enough data to back it, you know? Prison does not work in curing drug addiction. And make no mistake, just because I got sober, because I was arrested and put in prison, that does not mean that prison works. There were drugs in every facility I've ever been to. I made that decision. But it started with my arrest, yes. But still, we need to start looking at how to better help addicts. And I think that starts with decriminalizing all drugs. Now, it doesn't mean like, oh, let's make everything legal and start passing out drugs. No, if something becomes illegal, the demand for that goes up, the cost of that goes up, and we're, we're spending billions of dollars fighting the war on drugs. And inevitably what that means is we're putting broken people in prison, people that are hurting, people that are traumatized, people that are, are damaged like me, putting those people in prison, and then there's drugs in prison, we're telling them, just get sober. We're gonna torture you in prison. We're going to stigmatize you. We're gonna label you as a felon, and then we're not gonna hire you or rent to you. But stay sober. What we're doing is not working, and I, I hope that my story doesn't trick people into thinking prison works. I hope that my story allows people to see just how broken our system is. I'm gonna end today's video here. As always, I love you guys. Stay safe, stay sober, whatever that looks like to you, because there's no wrong way to recover. And I will see you in my next one. It's like, no one cares that I'm filming. Hold on. I'm calling Reese. Yes, mom. Can you please tell them to talk at a regular volume because they're three inches away from each other? Yes. Thank you. Say hi to everyone. You're on camera. Hi, everyone. I'm glad to be on camera. <laughs> on phone. On camera. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. My kids will talk at this volume when they're right next to each other. It's like, dude, Inside Boys, I'm filming just for a second.